Hello friends, for today's video we are back with another from readers. Today specifically is part two of the two writers from readers romance edition. Part one focused on the things that we are really tired of seeing, whether they be in romantic subplots, the romance genre, the fantasy romance genre, or just any genre if there's a romance present, here are the things that we're tired of. And then for today we are talking about the things that we would like to see more of. And still, of course, zeroing in on the romance portion of things. If you are interested in seeing more videos in this series, they are not typically romance themed. I just wanted to highlight the romance ones because every time I ask one of these sorts of questions, the romance, <laughs> there's so much to do with romance. I'm like, okay, we need to have some dedicated videos to this. But we've talked about publishers, we've talked about other components of things that we don't like seeing in writing, some trends, some tropes, those sorts of things. So I'll have my playlist linked. And if you are interested in participating in the next one of these, over on my community tab, you'll scroll a little bit and you should find the same question to writers from readers, female characters, what are your thoughts? And you can go ahead and leave your thoughts there and we'll get around to that one in the month of March. If you want to guarantee that your comment gets read, because sometimes I can't get through them all, uh, I do always ensure that I read through my patrons comments because I ask these same questions over there on my Patreon. So I'm going to start today with the to writers, from readers, more please with my friend Christy's comments. Uh, hello, Christy. <laughs> and Christy has said she wants to see more external forces preventing two characters from being together instead of just miscommunication. And then also sweetly intimate moments rather than straight to the spice. And I agree so much with both of these things. Anytime there is anything in a story that's really sweet. I'm just like, no. Oh. Even if it's just like very casual, the characters don't even know <laughs> that they're in love yet, but you're like, you know. If they do something sweet and cute, I'm just like, they love each other. Oh my gosh, they love each other. <laughs> and I turn into this like squeaky little, I just get excited. My husband and I are kind of a little bit hopeless romantics. We really love each other. We love seeing really old people in love. We love, we just love, we just think it's sweet. We just, it's, it's sweet, it's nice. And I would love to see more of those sweet moments. And then the tension and the spice, I feel like it's so much better because of it. I know this is going to be the dumbest analogy, but it's like if all you ever had was salty or spicy food, and then one day somebody introduced sweet to you, you'd be like, what is this? And it's nice to have a balance. It's nice to have things that are sweet. It's nice to have things that are salty. And in fact, I find a lot of times, I'm so sorry about the food analogy. I think maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> My mom and I are like, chocolate chip cookies that are a little bit like a tiny bit on the salty side are the best. You know, if it's too overwhelmingly sweet, you're like, mm, it's missing something. If there's no sweetness to it, and it's just salty. You're like, is this a cookie? And then when there's a perfect mix, you're like, ah, oh, it's so good. That's why sea salt and dark chocolate are so good. Am I making anybody else hungry? I'm so sorry. Anyway, and then the first part of what you were saying about the external forces, I did touch on this a little bit in talking about what we're frustrated with in that a lot of times the obstacles that couples who get along really well, the things that really make it difficult for them are outside forces. It has to do with your job. It has to do with pressure from something that you have going on. Maybe it is at work, but it doesn't have to be. It can just be like something to do with your house, something to do with another family member. Families play a huge role in obstacles. If you have to move and for whatever reason, finances, a lot of these things are what play into couples having to really come together to support each other and how they work through that. Because oftentimes, Maybe there's something that's really devastating or really difficult for one person in the group. And so it's easy for the group, like there's a bunch of people. I mean, maybe that's the case, but for a couple, one of them, generally, there might be something going on and, and it then makes it kind of easy for the other person to be supportive. But when there's things going on in both of those people's lives, how do they still find time for each other? How are they there for each other through that? And I'll even extend this into saying this isn't just in romances. This happens in friendships. This happens in sibling relationships. It's just an element that plays a role in our lives as people. And so we should be seeing that more often in our romances as opposed to just these two people can't open their mouths and have a conversation. <laughs> Next up, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah also has her own channel. More. I need to see more series with the slowest of subtle slow burns, please. It needs to take books and books for the relationship to develop, and I need it to rarely be the primary focus of the story. If any of you have recommendations for series like this or books like this, please feel free to leave them because I don't think Sarah's alone. 
I think I might also be there too. <laughs> um, I love those kinds of relationships that build in that way. Not saying you can't have a good relationship develop in a single book, but if you're looking at a series that's really long, it is great to see that relationship build throughout the series. Or I'll also add, if it does show characters getting together in the first book, how do they, kind of tying back to Christy's comment, how do they then deal with the usually earth-shattering world-ending type of stakes that you get throughout the rest of the series. One of you actually asked if I could do, if I could give recommendations of the things that we're asking about in these more please uh, responses. And I think what I would like to do is a dedicated video just to that. And that way all of you can leave your recommendations as well. And there's kind of like a specific space for you to easily find that information and for me to be able to go more in depth with the books because I do wanna make sure I take the time to go through a lot of what you've said in this prompt. And I feel like if I add in book recommendations as well, then I'm only gonna get around to a few and I wanna get around to as many as possible. So let me know if you'd like to see that other video and if you also would like to add your recommendations if I do that. Um, Next, uh, more slow burn romances that need time for several books, happy relationships. I wanted to read that right after Sarah's because they were back to back and they both were like, slow burn, slow burn, slow burn. After that, Jason says, although you mention it in your example, when I asked the question, I mentioned, um, for example, like married couples, do you want to see more of that? So although you mention it in your examples, yes, more married couples, specifically happily married couples making it work, even if it's just included as supporting characters, romance and adventure doesn't end at marriage, which I think is really cute. And it's really true. <laughs> um, I feel like most of my, ha well, yeah, like all my happiest moments um, with my husband have happened since we've been married. So also some sad stuff has happened since we've been married, but that's life. Um, but yeah, I don't know why people put so much, I'm not trying to, sorry, I'm not trying to belittle anybody's weddings if you really like weddings, but when people are like, it's the happiest day of my life, I'm like, is it? I feel like all the stuff that comes after is the fun part. Anyway, moving on, more old people and chubby people in love in fantasy books too, not just real life ones, falling in love and not just lust, connecting on a truly deep level over a longer period of time, more love letters like in Divine Rivals, happy characters that have been married or in love for a long time, and they said, I'm thinking of the Wesleys, something like that. Um, yeah, I said earlier, I, I think old couples in love is so cute. You know what's especially the cutest is old couples who are in love, they have children, and then their children have children, and then they, <laughs> the child, not the grandchild, but the, the child of the old person, brings the baby to the old people, and the old people are just so taken with the baby, and it's always so cute, and when it's great grandchildren, and they're just like, it's like, they're so old. <laughs> They're so old and they're so charmed by the baby and they're so in love and oftentimes they get emotional and they start crying and then I watch that and I'm like, Mwah! and I, I get them, that is so sweet. I, it'd be hard to capture that in a story because if you follow those people, you gotta follow them for a long time for them to be that old. But you know, they don't, grandparents and great grandparents can exist in books. The elderly can exist in books and be in love and be precious. They would be precious. On her iPad, exactly. she might as well be up in the moon. She's in another world. <gasps> I must stop. Now be nice to me. Even though it's not my birthday. <laughs> stop it. Get your hand off me. <laughs> You've been in the food. <laughs> oh, I don't want to my hair. Have any of you seen the movie? Belfast and also the way that the couple the old couple in that movie talk to each other they're so cute <laughs> and I want more of that in my fantasy basically you mentioned so many other things that I feel like were fantastic like falling in love and not just lust yeah I feel like what even I I understand some people like to read the spicy stuff but it's just so much better when like there's actually something developed between the characters and that they truly care about each other and you know then it's anyway yeah, I'm just gonna stop <laughs> where my train of thought was going. Um, connecting on a truly deep level over a longer period of time. Um, yeah, all those things, just agree. 
Uh, more older characters and different body types, and then more depth to relationships and well-developed characters. Loyalty to partners, um, partner partners, and although I like Spice, I prefer the characters to know each other for more than a minute. And then um, someone replied and said, yes, more mature and relatable characters, please. I know I mentioned this in the previous video, or I'm pretty sure I did, that Paladin's Grace is an example. I know I just got done saying maybe I'll do a whole video dedicated, but I do want to say Paladin's Grace is, is an example of couples in the book where the characters are not really young. They're actual adults who have been through some stuff, and so they have to kind of meet each other where they are, and I really liked seeing that in their relationship. So I do think I would really like it. As far as like the the body types and characters, yeah, everybody doesn't... How many times <laughs> has the male love interest been described as basically like a statue who is ethnically ambiguous with dark hair, very brooding, they have the chiseled jaw, the sharp cheekbones that could cut glass. And yeah, it would be nice to see people that look a little bit different. I do think contemporary romance actually is better at this than fantasy romance. Fantasy romance is a little behind, I think, in this department. Um, especially because fantasy romance so often has the love interest as elves or fae or these beings that are supposed to be unbelievably gorgeous and beautiful. And that should give you a hint at what we define as beautiful and gorgeous as these like sharp people. <laughs> um, but you know, softness can be nice or people that are just like bigger and just, you know, like there's like stocky guys that exist. There's lean guys that exist. Not everybody is somehow massive and cut at the same time. Like, are you dehydrated? It's so hard to get all those abs to show. So yeah, I mean, and, and of course the female characters as well. Um, they're always... I'm gonna pause for what I was about to say. I think the female characters in fantasy romance, because a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times the target audience uh, are women, and the main character is a woman, and she's falling in love with that statue of a man, um, who also has the equivalent personality of a statue. But the woman will be either not really described, so that you could have a reader insert, or she's like, kind of normal doesn't really realize she's beautiful. All of those annoying things that were tied up. When I say kind of normal, I mean, so that way, even if you can't literally put yourself in that character because maybe they do, they're described as having brown hair and you have blonde hair or something, or their hair is straight and yours is curly. So you can't perfectly fit because they actually have a little bit of a description. There's still, it's still kind of feeding off of that insecurity a lot of women have where they're like, I'm just kind of okay. And then there is this fantasy of being like kind of okay, but the super hot guy loves you. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, it's like, it's, it's not actually healthy. I'm not saying you can't have couples that are maybe um, conventionally, stereotypically speaking, where one person looks like they're fitting beauty standards and the other person doesn't necessarily. But women are so hard on themselves. So I feel like they connect with the, the girl isn't just drop dead gorgeous, but the man finds her beautiful because he sees her soul and he sees how she's such a good person and he cares about the deeper things. Yet we don't have to care about the deeper things with him, apparently. We just have to care that he's hot and tan. And you're like, wait, um, how about people are people? They come in all shapes and sizes. They look different. They have different physical capabilities. They have certain mental health things they have to deal with that is applicable no matter what your gender is. And we learn to love each other. So that one element of like learning to love each other for each other. Yeah, I'm all for that. I'm just saying that it needs to go both ways and it needs to not just be reduced to how hot is the character. Okay, sorry, moving on. This next one's kind of long. Uh, Damon says, let them fall in love. Show us them falling in love. Whether it's a straight up romance story or romantic subplot in any genre, two people hopping in the sack after two days or less is boring. And slow burn doesn't only mean it takes longer to get to the deed. Let us see them become more than friends. Let us watch them start to wonder if they, uh, the other person is the one. Let there be obstacles to uh, them being together, realistic ones, not plot conveniences. And if there is a sex scene, there doesn't have to be, let it be real too. Even if they've known each other for years, the first time can be awkward. Let them be shy and nervous. Let them be so comfortable with each other that they can laugh at how awkward it can be. I'd like to see more same-sex relationships. I don't get why queer has to be isolated to erotica because again, we don't need a graphic sex scene to understand what's 
uh, happening between them. They walk into the room, find a candle lit, a glass of wine, and their love interest lazing on the sofa in a robe, fresh from the shower. Perfect. We get it. Let the door close behind them and move on. And more platonic relationships. There are a few things I enjoy more in a story than rooting for friends who would do anything for each other, and it stays that way. Your comment is pretty much, it could just be just, this whole video could be about this comment, because there's so many great things that you highlighted here. I'll try to go in order. So the let us see them falling in love. Let's see the awkward moments, the sweet moments, the cute moments, and then also there can be this tension building, the wondering like, oh my gosh, am I in love with this person? All of those things. One of my favorites, I guess you could call it a trope, is when the character doesn't realize they're in love and then they have this epiphany or somebody's like, well, you love each other, right? And they're like, no. And they're like, wait, oh my gosh, I do. I always love like, oh, they don't even know, but they're so smitten. I love, I love that. Um, but it doesn't have to develop that way, of course. But I, the questioning, the wondering and the realization that you have these feelings and how much you would do for that person, how much you care about them, how much you can't imagine life without them because they're just like, you've become so, that is your person. I love seeing that in stories and it does feel like we don't actually see that as often as I would think because I think people do love, people love love. A lot of us want to find love. A lot of us love when our friends find love, even if you for yourself, you're, you're happy without a, a romantic partner. You just like love to see people falling in love. You love, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to stop. It's, it's sweet. It's nice. I don't know why we don't see more of this kind of love, what you're describing. It's so nice. I also completely agree with the idea that for queer relationships in books, it makes me sad that it is often reduced to just the physical because I feel like everybody deserves to get to see love like how they experience love. And it doesn't matter how that forms. It's just that that's important. And, and I feel like there's, it's like almost fetishizing and I don't think that that's fair or okay. It's not that it can't, you can't have that other stuff too for people that are interested in it the same way you have it for other people, but it just makes me sad that it gets reduced to that. And ironically, sometimes I feel like a lot of times it's written by women. Women are like, let me write about, which is, you know, I'm of the mindset that authors, there's a whole, oh my gosh, this could be a whole video too, but authors, I want them to feel comfortable trying as best as possible to include people who aren't just carbon copies of the author themselves. I don't want every book for the author to just have an author insert. So I'm happy that authors want to do what they can to make sure as many people are represented as possible. It's just a problem in publishing where it feels like so often the only people that are allowed to tell certain stories, when we're talking about romance anyway, are usually, not always, oftentimes though, white ladies. <laughs> so, you know, more all around. But again, that's more of like, hey, publishing, can you try? As far as the awkwardness and sometimes things can be goofy, I think one of you, and this might be a comment I end up reading in this if, if we have the time, but I think one of you mentioned like sometimes people accidentally bump each other and things like that. And that really made me laugh because my <laughs> husband, the amount of times that he's actually elbowed me in the face. Uh, I've been like, Sean, and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then I'm like, watch yourself, geez. <laughs> it, it's just silly stuff like that. And then in the future, sometimes Sean will purposefully like be going out of his way obnoxiously so to be very cautious and careful. And then I roll my eyes and then he'll play like, well, I have to because otherwise he'll be like, Sean, and then that kind of stuff. <laughs> I wonder if you're just like, wow, you guys sound annoying. But that kind of stuff, I feel like a lot of couples, that is very realistic. And I was really happy when I saw somebody brought that up because yeah, the accidental bumping noses, bonking each other in the head, hitting each other in the head with your head, that kind of stuff happens. And it doesn't even need to be, like, I, I don't know if people are instinctively thinking that that's just related to the, the act. Like people in close proximity, bump each other, accidentally hit each other, open a cabinet or a door on the other person, stuff like that happens. And it's nice when there is that more realistic element in your, in your love stories. Uh, now, Taylor says, 
She'd like to see more multi-POV romances and fantasy romances, not only having dual POV from our main love interests, but also side characters or other coupled up characters. A few examples that come to mind are Throne of Glass or the Aurelian Cycle. These are vastly different, but I'm just referring to the structure of the books. Additionally, expanding on different types of relationships, meaning uh, meaningful relationships or family relationships. It seems like the only people who can save our characters from bad situations would be the love interest, but I appreciate when a loyal friend comes and saves the day instead. And I don't think what I'm about to say is a spoiler by any means. Um, I won't give specifics or anything like that, but the character Sazed in Mistborn and Vin, there is a scene where Sazed helps Vin in the first Mistborn book. It's not some of the other characters that you might expect to save the day. And I think the relationship between Sazed and Vin, they're such drastically different characters, but she really respects him and admires him. And trust is such a big component of the Mistborn series and Vin learning to trust people. And I feel like she has this, that Sazed is like the person that she always trusts and that she always takes comfort uh, from their wisdom, from their, anytime they console her about anything. She just really respects and loves that person. I almost feel like almost the most pivotal when it comes to learning to trust because say that it's just like such a pure soul. And so yes, I completely agree. I like when there's more than just the love interest there to help the main character. And then so many of the other things you mentioned, I, I'm always a fan of casts of characters in books. And if a, an author can write a good cast of characters, I would love to see that more often in fantasy romance uh, as well. Last for the ones from Patreon and then switching on over to the community tab, Kylie says, uh, more queer relationships. One of the reasons that God Killer, I love God Killer, was such a delightful read for me was the effortless queer representation along with BIPOC and disability rep too. Not only is it great to see more on-page visibility, but it also makes for interesting stories with dynamics we may not have seen as much in other works. Prior of the Orange Tree is another fantasy that I think did this really well. I think for so many of us, and I know this also could be an entire dedicated video topic. But for so many of us, it's that like what Kylie is saying here, it's the effortlessness. It's showing people as they are and not everybody is the same. And I feel like when you really get to know people, you really start to see how different we all are and you love those differences and you really appreciate how much we are unique. And then also though, it I think creates empathy because uniqueness also present, excuse me, oh my gosh, uniqueness also presents unique challenges. We all face different things as a result of our existence being very different from someone else's. And it can be as simple as, you know, if somebody like I have to wear glasses, I, my vision is impaired a little bit. And so if I don't know where my glasses are and my husband's like, I'll find them for you because he can see a lot better if I've misplaced them or something like that. I know that's a very tiny example, like that's not as extreme, of course, but something little like that of just, it also allows, as far as tying this back to romances, it allows for you to see how couples meet each other where they are, support each other, are there for each other. And not just in romances, this can occur, of course, with friendships and all different kinds of relationships and stories. So when you see the world more accurately reflected, it can be that much more rewarding of a reading experience, I think. So yeah. 100% agree. Also, yay, God killer. I love God killer. Now getting around to the community tab, more healthy relationships with proper communication between characters. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think that right now, and we talked about this a lot in the please stop portion of this. Um, there's just such an emphasis on toxic relationships right now. And yeah, I would like to see more relationships where people treat each other really well. More character development and more relationship development, please. More consent and more healthy relationships. So I thought it was interesting that two of you almost, uh, I mean, literally back to back, were saying really similar things. More romance between older characters who have li lived a decent chunk of their adult lives. And you mentioned Paladin's Grace, yay. House of the Cerulean Sea, etc. It's really refreshing to read about characters who aren't teenagers or young adults still figuring things out. Um, also, female main characters who call out toxic behavior when it happens and sets boundaries. I like this one because we see so much toxicity in our romances these days that it would be great if let's say the love interest is saying something or doing something that's not okay. And if the woman immediately was like, no, and she just shot that down. And it would be nice if that guy for once, if we're like, let's examine all the ways he's not actually a good 
person to be in a relationship with. And if we meet somebody who is nice and sweet and charming and silly and they are able to actually provide something nice and you're able to provide something nice to the relationship, you being the main character in that, maybe that should be the love interest. You know what I'm saying? That I think so. Um, <laughs> next, more sweet. Oh, this is exactly what I was just saying. More sweet, caring, cinnamon roll male main characters with good senses of humor. Yes, I, uh, the cinnamon roll character is almost always one of my favorite characters. I feel that a good example is Laszlo Strange from Strange the Dreamer. Laszlo Strange is such a cinnamon roll. Oh my gosh. He also doesn't look like all the other love interests it feels like we get these days. That's being an, that's an exaggeration, but many of the love interests. I love Laszlo Strange. He's so sweet. He's so caring. He's so curious. He is great. I love him so much and he is such a cinnamon roll. Next, people from different cultures that learn to communicate effectively and grow to love each other. None of this falling business. Bonus points for arranged marriage type situations where they recognize their faults and they work on it without denial or hissy fits and become an amazing team because their differences mean they cover each other's metaphorical blind spots. And I don't know what your, I don't know these books, but you mentioned Casey Blair's Tea Princess Chronicles, Grace Draven's Radiance, Elizabeth McCoy's Lord Alchemist duology, most of K.M. Shea's Elves of Lessa books, or her Magiford series, several interconnected trilogies based on, in a location, each trilogy focusing on one character, a woman, and gradually her male uh, main character love interest. This isn't the only kind of romance I enjoy by a long shot, but it is one of the hardest to stumble across. Well, thank you for providing some examples of ones. That's great because I, I also like when there's the arranged marriage because that's a thing in a lot of fantasy, um, but the characters actually figure out how they can work together and they actually treat each other well and they navigate this uncomfortable situation really maturely. I would love to see more like that. So I'm glad that you brought that up. And then also the idea of characters coming from different cultures. Um, I don't by any means want to act as though I think different cultures immediately equals enemies. Um, but I do feel like in books, a lot of times what you'll see in fantasy with the enemies to lovers is that because they come from different places and they view each other differently and they're told certain things about each other's cultures that when they actually sit down and meet and talk to each other for whatever reason, there's like forced proximity of some sort. They actually start to see the beauty in each other's, um, the way of where one person lives, the other person lives, where they're from, their customs, those sorts of things. And that kind of enemies to lovers to me is always a lot more compelling than just I met this person and they annoyed me and so I hate them. <laughs> or truly like this person killed my mom. So I hate them. You're like, that's a pretty hard one to get over. Uh, can we have something in the middle of those two extremes? Um, but not even thinking about enemies to lovers, just talking about characters coming from different cultures. I think that's one of my favorite things in books when characters, they, because there is something really beautiful when you're getting to know another person, even something as simple as getting to know about their family traditions and things that like, oh, when I was growing up, this is what my family would always do. Now take that and apply it to something so much broader. And it's just so beautiful to see people come together, learn from each other, learn to appreciate the things that are different about each other and maybe start to build that into your own life. And I just think that that's lovely. I would love, like you said, to also see more of that in in romances. Uh, this person has a list of things. A male love interest with a sense of humor is the first one. So, you know, not just always the brooding, grumpy type. Uh, two, good communication. Yes. Three, more romance, less smut. I think that's been stated, but I agree. It's okay that smut exists for those that want it, but you know, some of us want to see the, the cute stuff too. Four, adorable and supportive friend side characters. I do think that romance books tend to have the cute, supportive uh, character. I almost would argue sometimes more than fantasy does, but I would always love to see more of that character. Can we please get more subtext in romance? I want to see the tiny ways a character shows what caring for a person actually means beyond physical attraction and grand gestures. Show me why characters actually like each other and how that manifests outside of pining. I want to be able to tell a character loves someone unconditionally without ever having to see them uh, kiss or say or think the words, I love you. They can still do that, of course, but I'm not gonna buy it if you don't sell how much the characters care beforehand. 
Yeah, uh, I was going to try to say your name, but your username is EC4291. So EC4291, I completely agree. I think I've kind of hit this point a little bit already, but uh, the cute stuff, you know, like the, the cute stuff is just great. And I don't want to constantly be like, my husband and I are so happy. Let me give an example, but I'm going to because my husband's sweet and <laughs> I want to give an example. But I mean, people talk about like love language and the different ways in which people uh, appreciate um, showing their love and affection for each other. But every now and then, Sean, he works at a grocery store and every now and then he'll come home and he'll just have bought me something that he knows that I like. He's like, oh, I just felt like you deserved this today. Just like silly, uh, not deserved it. Like you're allowed to have this, you know, not like that, but I just like just a cute little like, here you go. You, or, or sometimes if I'm telling him like, oh my gosh, my computer keeps having to restart. I can't get anything done. I'm so frustrated. I'm stressed. Technology, why won't technology ever work? Whatever, right? And he'll come home and be like, I just felt bad that you had a bad day. And he'll just like do something nice. And you're like, no, oh, he's so nice. <laughs> uh, I'd like to think I do things like that for him as well. Uh, I, I mean, I know I do. I just want to hype my husband up and I don't want to be like, let me tell you all the ways that I'm a great wife. <laughs> but um, yeah, the little things, you know, the little things are so cute. I'll tell you one little thing I do for Sean and it's a goofy thing, but I have a tradition of any time I find a unicorn mug, I buy Sean a unicorn mug because he loves coffee and because it's like this weird little quirk thing that we've, quirky thing we've started. Um, so Sean has a lot of unicorn mugs and it always makes him happy around Christmas. I found one that's honestly kind of hideous and I bought it for him and I was like, you don't have to, you know, use that. I know it's ugly. And he's like, no, I have to use it. And so it was like his holiday unicorn mug that he would drink out of all the time. Um, so like those goofy little things, why does it always have to be like, but their pectorals and their abs and also her waist is so small, you know, and you're like, all right. And then next up anyway. Um, so someone said, you all need to read the hexologist 10 out of 10 committed couple. So that's a good sell for that book in this particular conversation. <laughs> Please stop, um, confusing miscommunication as enemies to lovers more chemistry between couples, please more slow burn, please. So a lot of these we have discussed and it seems like a lot of you share this feeling. Can we just please have more books with healthy relationships and romances? Yep. More flirting build up, will they, won't they, tension and angst and less meaningless repetitive smut. We can only read about a couple having Thegs, you, you spelled it S-E-G-G-S, -G -G for so many times in one book before we get bored and authors should realize that. Yeah. More good female friendships that are uplifting and powerful in these. I love romance, but sometimes the female friendships in them are so toxic and gross. I'm just thinking about in Iron Flame, the sequel to Fourth Wing, where the male love interest's ex-girlfriend becomes a character and she's just so obnoxious. And there's a whole scene because characters carry on conversations while they're on the sparring mat. It's a thing in the book. That's like how you, they get to know each other, I feel like. But anyway, so the girl, <laughs> the ex-girlfriend, she's like, you know that thing he does with his fingers? I taught him that. And then just trying to, I don't know, whatever. Just being really cool, I guess. And then later when they're on the sparring mat and our main character is beating on her and she's like, you know that thing you taught him with his fingers? Thanks. And then her friends are like, yeah, I effing love you. And I'm just like, what am I reading? This is like middle schooler level of what they think. Actually, middle schoolers are cooler than that, I feel. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to insult middle schoolers. Middle schoolers are great. I just, I'm like, what? Is this a young person's what is this? What is this? Why is that? Ugh. Anyway, I'm bringing this up because, of course, inevitably, they learn to kind of, like, respect each other. It's like, you know, sometimes she pisses me off, but she actually is, like, kind of commendable, or she's actually, like, really strong, or whatever the case may be, and then they sort of, sort of form a friendship, and you're just like, what is this? I don't, I have never, ever had a woman be like, hey, <laughs> that just be awful to me, and then that somehow turns into well, now we're friends because we respect each other for being so awful. I think it feeds into this. We can't, talking about the different kinds of male love interests and how they all have to be that statue with no personality and they're just there for the woman to eventually get on top of or underneath. 
Whereas the female characters, sometimes they have to always be like, I'm strong and independent and I respect other women who are strong and independent. And strong and independent isn't actually strong and independent. It's just being an awful woman where you're like, why are you like this? Why are you like this? And I would like to see more sweet women. I would like, and, and what is actually a strong woman who is capable of showing her emotions, who is able to be there for her friends. Sometimes she has to put things aside. She sacrifices for other people, but she also tries to take care of herself and like just different kinds of people, different kinds of people than just the stereotype. This is why it'll be fun when we do the two writers from readers, female characters, but I'm going off on a tangent. So Basically, I was just agreeing with you that it would be nice if there were more female friendships that weren't stupid. More romance, less spice. I want to see flirting, courting, sharing similar interests, sweet gestures, etc. Honestly, I want some more romance-focused sci-fi books. I've read some good romantic subplots recently in sci-fi books I've enjoyed, and I'd like to see some where it basically is a romance novel in space. I would love Becky Chambers to write one. I also want more human ex-alien romances where they have to work together to overcome cultural differences. Think the romances we get in Star Trek. I also want more slow burn stories since that makes me like a romance more. I really like that you brought this up because so much of this conversation, since so many of us are fantasy readers, is centered around fantasy. So I really love that you brought up sci-fi and there's so many great opportunities to do really interesting and great things with relationships in sci-fi books. So I would like to see that too. And if anybody has recommendations, feel free to leave them. Long time married couples facing challenges and having to overcome them. I want to see more of how and why people stay in love committed to each other. And I think that feeds into a lot of what we've been talking about and I completely agree. I want to see more romances wherein you actually see the couple work together after they get together. The love story doesn't stop when the characters profess their love for one another. That's only the beginning. Honestly, I would love to see a couple from where uh, when they first get together to when they are an old married couple with every hurdle they have worked on and overcome together. Would probably be a very long series though, but as a fantasy subplot, I think that could work. I'm going to stop there just because I feel like that comment is a nice place to stop since it's kind of talking about like, oh, it'd be nice to see something in its entirety. And so we're going to end the video feeling like we've come to a nice conclusion. I agree that would be really wonderful to see. I think there there is opportunities to do that in continuation series, especially if you give us a cute old married couple and they were young and they fell in love in the initial series and you give us a continuation and you give us now they're cute and old. Please don't kill them. <laughs> Please don't kill them. That would be devastating. So if somebody's going to do this, let us have the cute old couple in the story, please. And you can be like, I remember when they fell in love. And if you read the continuation series first, then you can go back and see how the cute old couple fell in love. That'd be adorable. I would love that. Anyway, I appreciate everybody for all of your contributions to these conversations. They've been so much fun. I've really enjoyed just getting to hear your thoughts and us getting to talk about what we'd love to see more of because I do feel a little bit bad that sometimes it's so much of like, here's all the things that annoy us, but it's great to talk about the things that we really love and hopefully we'll get more of in the future. Maybe in the next few years, we'll be complaining that we have too much of these things, but I would actually honestly love that. I think it'd be great. And also since so much of this video was about things that we'd love to see more of, I'm really sorry for all of the what was likely kind of loud squealing <laughs> that happened in this video. But yeah, like cute love stories are cute love stories and it's nice. So I would like to see more of them. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.